Good evening and welcome to Flat Earth United Kingdom. Joining me this evening is Carly Sunshine. How are you doing, Carly? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. This will be a bit of a weird one for me because there's been no uh, lead up to the show. So we've not had masses of conversations <laughs> beforehand. We've had a few chats on Skype, a few nice exchanges in uh, the comment section of YouTube videos, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think maybe we talked a little while back on like Facebook Messenger or something when I I have a habit of when I want to become friends with someone I reach out to them and also try to you know send a private message so it's not you know I'm just not a random person asking to be their friend trying to make some kind of connection so I think we talked a little bit a while back on private messenger but yeah we haven't really chatted you know through Skype or anything a whole lot one of those is a weird one where we watch each other's videos you get a feeling <laughs> i talked about this earlier like you know yeah. the person really you know what they've presented on a video yep i know i almost feel it's almost like an awkward feeling because i i feel the same way i feel like i know these people when i watch their video logs or i watch their content videos but then when i sit down and actually talk to them and we're not we're not face to face but we're actually having dialogue it's like this is kind of funny because we haven't done this before, but it's really nice. It just is a whole new connection, I believe. Well, I mean, we've, we've doubled on it already, which is Facebook. That's where you're the most prevalent. I mean, you've got a couple of thousand friends on there, I noticed earlier. It's a huge number of people to be connected to. Yeah, and I don't, I can tell you when I first started Facebook, I absolutely did not want that, it to, you know, get that big. But ever since the, the Flat Earth community has started, and I, decided to keep t taking steps forward and, and getting involved in Facebook groups and and actually becoming brave enough to have a content channel and things like that and getting on these hangouts, more and more people want to connect with me. And it's kind of like when I first started, I wanted to connect with people that I felt like um, I resonated with and I understood where they were coming from and I felt like maybe they had something to teach me or I could teach them something. So I feel like the the more I kind of gain courage that I need to I need to kind of reach out to more people and allow myself to be there if, if someone needs me. So a friends list keeps growing and the groups keep growing, which is I think there's nothing wrong with that. I love it actually. I mean, it's, it's very interesting to me because I tend to steer clear of Facebook because I find it to be <laughs> um, a bit insidious, <laughs> you know, um, but I see lots of flat earth information come through on email. So although I don't necessarily go right. into the chats and into the comments, I get the updates and then we'll read the emails. They're quite handy. Um, but right. I, I steer clear because it, it, it scares me a little bit. So to see somebody who's, who's sort of pioneering um, a nice discord within that platform, because it's a social platform after all, you know, it's not right. really designed to, to explore the shape of the earth. But, you know, people like you are actually doing that on that platform. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, and honestly, when I first started getting into Flat Earth, I did more of it just on my own and didn't even realize that um, Flat Earth was available as far as an information source or even, <laughs> I want to say almost like support groups when it comes to the Facebook groups. I didn't know that was available for months and months. Um, and I will tell you, I mean, there are there are avenues out there on Facebook that you can take that really is like, I feel like the wrong road to go down because all those groups want to do is just fight and bicker and and I wouldn't even call it debating. They literally just want to get on there and and spew hate at each other because they're they're angry. They're either angry that <laughs> they're angry that they've been lied to or they're angry that someone's telling them they've been lied to, you know? So I think whenever I kind of got into the community as far as the Facebook, when it came to flat earth and truth in general, I decided I wanted to make my own group and or groups that were different, that were very informational, where people could share their observations and their documentations and their experiments and even just how they're feeling and how they're coping with the truth or maybe being lied to all their life. So they had that place to go that was safe instead of it being just a nasty group where everybody just argues and fights. <laughs> so I feel like that's maybe where I've pioneered more is giving people basically a safe room to go to so that they can learn and share and then take that information and go share that with your friends and family, you know, become confident in what you're learning 
and then go out there and spread it out in the real world. That's, that was going to be the next question. When you say spread it out, are these closed groups or are they groups that will permeate the whole of Facebook? Some of them, uh, what I consider my baby is called Flat and Happy, and I know that's a funny name, <laughs> but I came up with it, you know, um, I, I guess almost like it's been more than a year ago and the name just stuck and I thought it was funny. Um, but uh, that one is a closed group, but I made that specifically so that people could feel safe and go in there and um, not be harassed by someone who wanted to debate them, uh, that their family and friends couldn't necessarily see what they're sharing, so they could just share their information and their experiments and get information from other people without uh, being afraid that it's getting out to their friends and family. I know that sounds weird, but on the flip side, oh, are you still there, Nathan? Oh, thank you. <laughs> on the flip side, um, I do run also some groups that are uh, just like groups. Some groups are open so that if um, you did want to share publicly, you can. So there's the whole gambit of different you know, ways to share. And have you seen a, a progression then in the, I'm more interested, I, I will come back to Flat and Happy because it's, it's yeah. one of those, you know, but in the <laughs> public arena, have you seen an improvement as there been uh, I'm going to use this word, a normalization in talking about Flat Earth on Facebook, would you say? Um, I mean, sometimes I can just kind of go by what I see in my on my private page. And, I mean, you do get some harassment and you get some bad feedback. But every once in a while, you do have someone that is definitely following you quietly. And I've had lots of friends and family on the side come up to me like, you know, I really kind of want to talk about this flatter thing that you post about all the time. Or maybe just about something else that I post about as far as truth in this world that isn't shown on, you know, the regular media. Um, but I will tell you what I do witness as far as like testimonials is that I see over, it, I've been involved in this almost two years now and a little over a year as far as the Facebook groups. I have seen so many members, I want to say like mature with their knowledge as far as flat earth and their confidence and really almost kind of like grow their craft. They've kind of found their niche. They've they've become like the art, artists where they're sharing with their friends and family because they're doing art or they're writing poetry or they're they're branching out and making their own groups or they're making their own content channels. And it's just, it's fabulous for me to watch them. It's like watching my friends grow, you know, in this truth. That makes me happy when I'm seeing these people. I remember them joining my group and they were maybe not scared, but very timid. And they were um, struggling with this as far as even dealing with talking to other people about flat earth and now they're just like so confident and found a way to share it with other people and I feel like that's why I'm doing this so that these people have this place to go that they can safely grow and then go out and, and share the truth. Yeah it's 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 nice in theory but as you well know we had a conversation with Zoe just before this show started and it was about sharing on Facebook and right. I said oh you know you're going to share the show and she was like well Actually, no, I don't share videos. I don't share my own videos on Facebook. And I right. understood why, because as soon as you do that, you're opening yourself up to friends, family, all the people that you know um, to be ridiculed, to have stones thrown at you, to be questioned. And if you're new to it, it might be the case that you haven't necessarily got any answers for the people that you've um, been, you know, to have these questions directed at you. So the closed groups, like you say, is a much more safe haven for somebody to come along in, in, in a in a, a more safe place that they're not going to have their friends and family chuck stones at them, just ask a, a perfectly benign right. question. Right. And I know I've, I've heard a lot of feedback where people say, well, that's just, you know, it's, um, it's like a wimpy way out and you're going into this safe room and you're all talking amongst each other, but you're not changing anybody's mind, but it's really not true. And they don't necessarily understand what they're talking about because they're not in there. You don't understand that not every person that joins a flat earth group, that's a closed group because they want to go in there and learn. Not everyone's at the same level. So you, I have people join that are like, okay, I just started looking in this, into this. I've only been into it for two weeks. And they have a lot of growing to do before they can go out and share it because 
they're not going to understand how to explain it to someone else. You know what I mean? Um, and, a, and another perk would be that if they, they are in this group and they're learning and they're building their confidence up and say they decide they want to become brave and they share something about Flat Earth on their private timeline, and then they start getting bombarded by friends and family that are saying they want to debate them. If they have trouble, then they can tag people that they know that can maybe have a little bit more education in certain areas or some other people that can come in and, and help them. And that's where I think it helps as well. It's almost like a support program where if you don't know the answer, maybe one of your friends do, you know. That's it. And not knowing the answer, I mean, it, maybe to you and to I, I'm assuming in this case, um, it's quite simplistic, you know. There's no, um, there's no curve. You can boil it down really simply if you want to. Flat Earth, there is no curve. Um, right. That's oversimplifying it. It's more people's understanding of how deception works and the right. layers. And you mentioned about TV earlier. That's another thing I'm hoping we'll go on to a little bit, a little bit later on. But understanding the the, the layers of deception is a fast track to knowing that you don't necessarily have to unpick every heliocentric argument that's been piled right. on top of a heliocentric debunking for a flat earth argument. You know, there's a preponderance of evidence for the globe. You know, right. it's, 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 there's a mass of it. For every flat earth debunking out there, there is a heliocentric debunking. It might be absolutely useless and easily debunked again if you scratch the surface. But nevertheless, anybody who looks on the surface will find there's a preponderance of evidence that we live on a globe. It's nonsense, but right. you'll still be flying in the face of hundreds of people that will say, well, here's this obvious globe proof, you know, here's the, right. uh, the, the, the star rotations. They obviously prove the ground beneath your feet are moving. You know, it's, it's, it's nonsense, but you've got to go through that process of learning all of the debunkings with people in a safe place where you're not debating against somebody who is, quite literally screaming at you, you know, in capital right. letters on, you yeah. know, I see it all the time. I mean, I've often, I've often compared it to like working at retail and I don't mean that to sound it, make it sound chintzy or cheap or anything, but I've, I've worked in retail for a very long time. So when you're selling anything, you're not just trying to convince that person that, you know, they need this product, although product knowledge is important, you're building a relationship with that person so that they trust you and trust what you're saying. You know, and I think part of what is most important when people take information about the flat earth back to their friends and family and they're trying to uh, explain this to them, it you don't necessarily need to be completely convincing them right then. You just need to like create a spark in them so that they get interested and they're curious. So they go research research it themselves. I say this often that I it's I I can't sit there or stand there and hold someone's hand and do all that research for them. You know what I mean? You kind of have to get them interested in it and and then you can guide them in the right direction. And then they need to be able to really dig into it because I don't think they're going to get uh, the same kind of experience and what they need out of this unless they look into it on their own. I mean, that's what all of us did that are out there now uh, trying to share the truth is that we kind of, we dug into it on our own and we, we went through all the, the hardships and the um, cognitive dissonance and all that kind of stuff we had to get over on our own. So that's kind of what I encourage people to do is, um, you don't necessarily have to completely convince them, just get them interested so that they look into it. Because you're never going to change someone's mind. They have, to, they have to figure it out on their own. Yeah, it's the age old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. David Weiss so actually said something similar um, about yeah. spoon feeding people when it came to, mm -hmm. you know, he'd get a commenter, he'd offer them an answer, a, you know, singular. And then refer yeah. him to his website and say, you know, go to deepinsidetherabbithole.com and there's plenty yeah. of two minute videos if you've got a short attention span or, you know, half an hour documentaries or hour long documentaries if you if you really want yeah. to get in depth. But they're normally heliocentric deceptions. Most flat earth is based around picking, uh, unpicking the lies, you know, which brings us on to TV, you know, the, the brainwashing central that we're all <laughs> afflicted <Right>. by. <laughs> so you, do, you, do you watch TV at all? Um, not very often. Uh, like late at night, sometimes I'll watch some funny old sitcoms just to kind of um, 
wind down, but normally I'm checking Facebook and YouTube and all those sorts of things. But I'm not, um, I don't follow any TV shows. I don't watch sports. Um, I, I do not watch much TV at all. I can't say that I, I follow anything on TV. I mean, I shared your testimonial on Facebook, your YouTube fest testimonial. Um, and mm -hmm. in that, you were talking about your love of music and the way that we're programmed through that, which is something I'm certainly fascinated with. I'm exactly the same as you. I don't watch TV. My wife, yeah. I'll occasionally walk in and see the Kardashians on, which, you know, it does grieve me. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> you know, that's, that's her bag. Fair play. You know, she likes it. Um, but there we go. It's it's one of those. The music, on the other hand, I, I listen to in the UK Radio One, which is our new music station, and it's you know a teeny bopper station. But you yeah. get all of the latest greatest music, and it is right. it's, it's as riddled with programming as any TV station um, will you know pump out in their TV uh, series. Is. You know it is uh, interesting to to pick apart the programming that goes on within music. Well, it just. I think when I was sharing my backstory, that was kind of like, that was one of those spur of the moment things where I was kind of feeling really down because of the, <laughs> you know, the, the way the world is right now. And I, I have those moments probably once a week, but um, yeah, I get really frustrated because well, everything has changed. I mean, there's so, there's so much about music that I used to love, but I can't look at it or listen to it and feel the same way anymore, you know, and same way with movies. In fact, I've noticed, um, I mean, probably even just two years ago, if I would have seen all the movies that are being, because uh, I do, I mean, every once in a while, even on YouTube, you see there are advertisements, and a lot of times it's for movies or TV shows coming out. And some of those movies coming out, I mean, I would have been hardcore into because they're like sci-fi stuff, you know. It's like robots and aliens and, and going to Mars and all this, you know, strange things. And now I just see it and I think, oh my goodness, this is programming people so much to think that this is real. I mean, this looks more real than what we're given with the NASA budget and people will emotionally become attached to these movies just like they do like The Walking Dead and all these TV shows. And they think it's, they think it's genuine or that it's going to happen someday and it, it's just, it's putting that thought in their head and I just, I can't even bring myself to look at it anymore, you know. It's taken away that the little bit of fake joy I used to have watching, you know, movies like that. I can't, I can't really watch them very easily. I mean, you said you made that testimony because of how the world is. I mean, elaborate on that a little bit. How do, you, what do you mean exactly? Well, I think, I think just, I'm trying to think back how I felt that day. I think that was before even all the like Pizzagate pedophilia things, things were coming out, which makes me feel even worse when it comes to thinking about the, um, the deception and, and the, the way the elite and the leaders are in this world. But I think I was just having one of those moments where I felt very um, like segregated, separated from the world, different, you know, knowing things that other people d don't understand feeling like you kind of have to be fake around some of your like friends that you see, you know, throughout the day and the people that you work with and, and going to your slave job. And <laughs> I think I was just feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all that. And it's like, I, you can't go back to pretending you don't know how the world is really working or you can't go back to not knowing all these lies that we were taught, you know, growing up. I, could, I can't go back and take that out of my mind, but then I have to kind of live that way, kind of keeping it to myself. But then when I say that out, out loud, I think, well, you really don't have to keep it to yourself, but when you don't keep it to yourself, you scare people away, you know? It's just, it was one of those moments I was having where I felt, you know, a certain way about feeling different. And I wanted to kind of get that out in that video. And then I wanted to kind of share, at that point, I wanted to share my backstory um, and then a little bit of the positivity at the end, <laughs> just kind of try to balance it out. But I think that probably a lot of us feel that way. And that's another reason why I made some of the groups that I did make, just to kind of be that emotional support when you feel like you don't have anyone you can talk to because no one understands at least you can come to the group or the people that you've met in the group and have some kind of bond. 
Well, that's that's kind of what I meant when I was saying. Do, do you feel now that it's it's progressed on a bit where you can more easily talk openly with friends and family? I mean, from from my personal experience, just when I made that advert for this show, I was out yeah. in yeah. Birmingham Town Centre with the uh, um, mother-in-law and you know my um, uh, uh, sister, uh, wife's brother and so on and so forth, just yeah. family. And yeah. I'm making that advert on the phone and standing in the middle of the town, you know, at the top of my lungs, you know, join in, Flat Earth, UK, whatever, you know, doing it loud <laughs> with people around me. Yeah. And I didn't feel in the slightest bit uncomfortable. Um, and when I was showing them as I was editing it, you know, I've not discussed Flat Earth with that particular part of my family, but I didn't right. feel slight, even slightly embarrassed. I didn't care. I was like, this is, this is how it is. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can take it or leave it. That's fine by me. Yeah, you know, this, is, this is me. <laughs> Um, I, I think it is getting easier. Um, like with my fiance, who I'm the closest with when, when I first started all this almost two years ago, I think he was a little annoyed by it and a little frustrated and maybe even just a little scared because of things that I was talking about. And, um, but th things have changed with him a lot. I think that he sees that I'm so dedicated into sharing this truth and learning about it. And now I can talk freely with him about whatever I, I want to. And we listen to shows together a lot as well. And he gets very interested in it. He, I don't know if I would necessarily say that he would consider himself a flat earther, but he's very, very open-minded to listening, which it makes it a lot easier for me. Like if I tell him, you know, Tuesday night, I'm going to be set up to do a, a hangout and I'm going to be talking about flat earth. He's okay with that, you know. <laughs> um, or, like, I listen to Flat Earth uh, documentaries and interviews all the time when I'm at home. Either I have my earbuds in or I have it just playing. If he wants to listen to it, then he can listen in, you know. So that's gotten a lot easier. Um, I talk a little bit with my mom and some friends, but most of the friends that I have that are close to me that live around me, uh, they don't quite understand. <laughs> You know, I'm not, I can't be quite as open with them, not yet, but some of them have questioned it. So it's, it's definitely in the works. When you say question it, does it start with the usual snipe or a bit of ridicule or is it a fairly friendly approach? Um, most of it's been fairly friendly. They're just curious. They see me putting things up on mostly on Facebook or I might mention something while we're out and about. Like, I mean, a lot of my friends know I do like, moon photography and um so they'll start questioning things like that and I kind of slip in you know well you know how is it that we can see that these kinds of things on the moon when they're saying it's 239,000 you know miles away and kind of can slip in some of those questions um when it comes to just sharing like even just my photography and such but most of it's been pretty friendly I should I should be more brave and I should talk about it more often <laughs> Do, do you feel, I mean, this is maybe a question for you then, do you feel comfortable with your, you know, overall understanding of the heliocentric deception and flat earth answers? Can you comfortably disclose information at length when someone has a random question about the whole thing? Well, you know, I want to say that I think I could, but honestly, mostly what I do is I'm a keyboard warrior, you know, is that I type, I type answers when it's just talking to people online. So when it comes to talking to people in real life, it's completely different, you know. So I would like to say I feel pretty confident, but you just never know until you're in that situation, you know what I mean? But I'm usually, I, I pride myself on being a pretty respectful person, so I would hope that it wouldn't become heated, you know, that they would understand and that we would be able to have a, a good conversation, and if it ends that we... Uh, have differences in opinion then so be it you know but it kind of opens that channel that we could talk about it in the future so I should reserve this question for the first question but I, <laughs> I always seem to forget that these days <laughs> how did you actually find out Earth is flat so well I can kind of tell you how it started I um it has been almost two years for me it was it'll be two years in February but February of 2015, I was very much into studying the moon. And just right before that, I was into some of the truth seeking. Um, I was studying like things like CERN. I was studying uh, Jade Helm 15, which was like a military exercise that was going on in the United States. And I was listening to a, a radio show called um, Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. 
and he interviewed uh, Crow Triple Seven. And Crow Triple Seven was talking about the lunar wave. I think the show is called Lunomaly, like a lunar anomaly. And it really got me thinking um, and started questioning things about the sun and the moon. Well, then, not too long after um, Crow Triple Seven was interviewed by Clyde Lewis, then Mark Sargent was interviewed. And I'm talking, this had to have been like right after he did the Flat Earth Clues because he didn't, it was, and I say this all the time that unfortunately the interview didn't go really, really well. Like Clyde had a lot of people that called in and I feel like Mark wasn't able to really get his answers out. And I feel like it didn't do the, the, um, flat earth truth very, very much justice at the time, but it, it got me questioning it. So I started looking into it. Um, and after that, I, I think I, uh, I found out about Eric Dubay and his Atlantic Atlantean conspiracy and I think it was just a website at the time. And from there, I just started doing the outside research just on the internet. Um, and then uh, I don't remember how I found out that it was on Facebook, but I think I started listening to the, um, it was the, I think it was called the Ball Earth Skeptic Roundtables. And I got sucked into all those, and I, then I started um, adding myself or, or joining some of the Facebook groups. And it was just like history after that. I just I was completely dedicated. It didn't take me long once I heard Mark Sargent and Eric Dubay talk about it that I was like, why have I always thought that the Earth was a spinning ball? <laughs> you know, it just really, really clicked for me. Because um, I, I always questioned the distances to the sun and the moon. I just never understood how the sun could be that far away. How in the world could we ever possibly measure that? How in the world could we ever possibly measure even what the moon is, you know, what it's made, or not the moon, but the sun, that it, that it is this certain type of energy or this certain type of light if, if it was that far away. You know, it never made sense to me. So all these things, um, it got me questioning, and it didn't take long for me to say, you know what, I think the earth is not moving <laughs> and we're not on a spinning ball and it grew from there and once i started joining um, the flat earth groups i realized that there was something missing as far as like a safe group like i was explaining earlier and around october of 2015 well, it was probably august september i started thinking about it and i finally committed in october and decided i was going to make my own group and that's when i created flat and happy <laughs> And from there, I was just, I was enjoying so much adminning that group that I had, there was other people saying, you know, I have this group and I need help with this group. And can you co-admin this group with me? And just started growing from there. And I eventually got up the courage to then start making my own videos. So I decided to create a YouTube channel too. And I, and I thought to myself, I don't know how I'm going to, like, I have a, a cell phone and I have an old laptop that I was, I think I was just borrowing at the time. I don't know how I'm going to make videos, but I, I figured it out. I, I did something, you know, I felt like I could contribute something, make some kind of video, share my thoughts or do some photography and make observations and share them. And it seems like a lot of people seem to connect with that. So I just keep, keep doing it. <laughs> it's definitely one of the most positive aspects that you can do things yourself. You, know, you mentioned yeah. about moon observations. I, I distinctly remember pre-flat Earth um, looking through the telescope at the moon and having a plane fly through view for you know just a fraction of a second and it being yeah. in focus and scratching my head and going, what the hell's going on? This makes no sense. <laughs> so, you know, did, did, when you watched Crow, uh, Crow Triple Seven, I'll spell it for anyone who doesn't know, C W R O W seven seven seven. Did you know yeah. that he absolutely knows we're on a flat and stationary plane when you were watching him? No, I really did not. I, I, when I first heard him talking about the lunar wave, which is what I, I got sucked into in the beginning, he was not proclaiming that he thought that the Earth didn't move or that the Earth was flat. And he still won't say he's a flat earther, but he definitely knows we're not on a spinning ball. Um, but no, I really did not know. But that got me... I already had a fascination fascination with the moon and the sun. So that kind of just drew me in even more as far as questioning. I've always been someone that questioned the, you know, original story on everything. And that just, I was like, 
I don't know what I'm seeing there on the moon. And <laughs> I had no explanation for it, you know. And I know that's, that that might sound weird to the people listening. What is that? What does a wave on the moon have to do with flat earth? But it just started making me question everything that I was taught about the moon, you know. And even like you said, you mentioned um, – before you knew the earth was flat that you remember looking through a telescope and you saw this plane go by the moon and you're like, how is that in focus? And so is the moon before I got into flat earth. I remember making this observation because where I live, um, it's out in the country behind my house is a big cornfield and in front of my house is a, a big field. And in the front of the house, I can get some really good video and pictures of the sun and moon. I like to call it exit. I don't like to say set. <laughs> And I remember noticing that there's a giant tree out in this field. And I remember noticing that in the summer months, the sun and the moon were setting way north. And that when it was getting closer to the winter months, the sun was, or exiting, I'm sorry, exiting way farther, um, like getting closer to being exiting in the west. And I didn't understand why that was happening. And I remember also taking pictures of the sun at one point at one month and then the sun during like the summer month and comparing them. And I was like scratching my head, like no one's ever explained to me why this happens. You know, everyone always just assumes the sun rises in the East and sets in the West, but that's not really true. But like one day of the year. So that was another thing that always, I always question, like what, what are we being told and why is it that way? Do, do the heliocentrists even understand why that happens? You know, a lot of people don't. Um, but once I got into flat earth and I started realizing, I, I've done some studies on the sun's path and I, I started understanding why I was seeing the sun, you know, it's, it's positioning moving every day, actually, you know, um, between the months, the winter and the summer months. But those are just things that you, before I even decided that the earth was flat, I was like, it was making me question things. It's, it's conversations like this that can sort of demonstrate to anybody who's watching why we are so compelled to do what we do. You know, it, to, to somebody who's living on a, a globe right now and they just accept all of the nonsense that they are told, there is no desire whatsoever to go out and track the sun. Whereas as a flat earther, yeah. I felt compelled to do it. You know, I was driven to do that because yeah. you find out how it works for yourself. Suddenly you realize how little you know, how much you have taken on faith, how much is yeah. belief based. And that the opposite of that is to, to, to be empowered, to take ownership of, of where you live and, and looking, looking out for the answers yourself. And that's an amazing feeling. You know, it's difficult yeah. to, to portray it when all you're getting is stones thrown at you because the assumption yep. is the, from the person you're talking to that you're an idiot. And in reality, most of us that are really studying this know so much more about Earth than they can even imagine. And I know, like, whenever, when I started trying to get into making my own observations, actually documenting them so I could try to share pictures or make a video. Um, I think it was in September of 2015, we had the blood moon, uh, lunar, yeah, the blood moon eclipse. And it was cloudy that night and I was so bummed because I wanted to go out and get it on video or get pictures of it. But I still went out, I got a few really good pictures. But I sat out there um, for three hours and watched this. And it was like emotional for me. And I don't know if anyone understands that, but it was like I'm sitting out there just in awe watching what's going on. And I'm thinking to myself, there's absolutely no way that that's Earth's shadow doing this. But also I'm like, I, I don't understand what's going on, and, but I don't believe the original story. Like, what am I seeing? I was in so much awe that I actually got emotional about it. And I, I feel that way every time I go out there and, and take – photographs of the sun and the moon or do any kind of videos when it comes to the those observations I feel the same way I mean if anything if someone out there's you know debating whether they should start questioning whether the earth is flat and motionless at least go start trying it and making your own observations because if anything else you're going to enjoy it I mean it changed me I mean on the flip side of that how have you got on with looking at NASA and debunking their nonsense is that something you dabble in at all 
I, I don't normally get in. There's a couple of things I've gotten into, like as far as looking at NASA's proofs and trying to, um, you know, debunk them. A couple of things about the moon, like I've gone through some of the NASA pictures and there's some moon pictures where they're supposedly taking pictures of the moon from the ISS. And I don't remember how high up the ISS is, but it's when they take the pictures of the moon, they're taking this picture of the moon and then showing us down here on Earth. And it's the exact same face of the moon that we see all the way down on Earth. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world did they see the exact same face? When they're how many miles up are they like 130 or something like that? I don't remember. Uh, it might might be less than that, but I don't remember exactly. But even if it's 20 miles up, you should see something maybe just a little bit different. You know, it it, it was identical. So to me, it just looked like a picture that someone took on Earth of the Moon and they just put it up there. You know, and made it look like it's in outer space, things like that. But I haven't gone through a whole lot of their stuff and tried to debunk it. It just makes me disgusted to look at a lot of their pictures. Um, but I have, like, in when I first started getting into the Facebook um, Flat Earth groups, um, we used to get together and do, like, um, truth bombing. We actually would have days where we would, uh, um, like, coordinate, and everyone at the same time or between, you know, a certain couple hours – Everybody that knew about it would get on all the NASA sites, all the science sites, and just truth bomb. And that was actually made the community feel like they were, you know, closer, like close knit. And it was so much fun to get on there and spread truth. So I used to be really active in that when we first, like, that was in, that was probably October, around October 2015. I, I really enjoyed that. I, I took part when that happened. And yeah, I enjoyed it, it too. It was great because it gave me the confidence to actually, although I wasn't necessarily truth bombing, it gave me the, because there was so much carnage, there were so many messages to NASA, it was an opportunity <laughs> while there was, you know, flat earth being spewed all over the pages to actually ask a few key questions. So I got yep. um, explanations from people at NASA about how they got through the Van Allen belt, you know, and it got to the point where I was, you know, having sharp intakes of breath as I was getting some of the answers. They were saying yeah. basically they got lucky. And you're like, oh, you can't believe they're saying this to you. Yeah. No, the way they were phrasing it was, you know, they were lucky they weren't killed. You know, yeah. they're kind of putting that reverse spin on it. And you're like, that's your explanation. That's, <laughs> that's from NASA. Outrageous. Yeah. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually get to that point. This is, um, you know, good 18 months ago now. It's quite a while back. Um, yeah. But at that time, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, surely they haven't got the audacity to just bare face lie, you know, <laughs> and they have, you know, it's it's outrageous, but it was nice yeah. to see. So truth yeah. bombing was great. I don't know, maybe that'll come up again. I know, maybe we should organize something like that. But it was, it, um, for one thing, it was astounding when somebody would actually answer you from <laughs> one of those sites, because like you said, the answers that they said were just, you know, ludicrous but it was also felt so good to get on these sites and all of a sudden be like I know that person commenting and I know that person commenting and everybody's backing each other up and it also it was like an educational thing I mean if you I remember talking to some people and they're like I really want to be involved in the truth bombing but I don't I don't know enough information or I don't know what to say and I'm like literally you could just get on there and be like earth is flat and stationary and then leave <laughs> You know, just drop something. You don't have to stay there and know all the answers. But the people that participated had fun, you know. And you can learn from other people who were really doing a good job with it, you know, and really maybe getting through to some people. And I've I've had situations on other threads that had nothing to do with Flat Earth where people questioned it. And then you become friends with that person through Facebook. And they might question a little bit later. And I've invited them into groups and stuff. Um you just never know where it's going to go. You never know who's listening that's not, you know, talking on that thread that they're just reading along and it's going to plant a seed, you know, and then they're going to go research. I mean, these are just all those little ways where the flat earth truth is just growing. I think it's growing a lot more than people um, suspect, you know. It's like, a, it's like a gateway to a whole bunch of other truths. So you end up in a position where, it's again, it's hard to explain to somebody that when, you, when, you're, when you're digging through these truths, you mentioned Pizzagate earlier, and I've got mixed emotions on the subject, but we won't get too deep into it. Um, but when you find things like that out, you're seeing very dark aspects of the world that we live in. But that is actually quite uplifting because you're seeing it. Finally, the veil's being lifted. Now, 
it's horrific, but you'd rather know than not know. You know, I don't like living in ignorance. And knowing how the world is operating and the people who are doing these things gives you a little bit more a kind of a sense of ease that you can you can potentially do things about it. You know, you do have a voice and you can speak out about the horrific nature of the world. That's all on the negative side. On the positive side, like I said earlier, you've got the empowerment factor, the fact that you can start doing things for yourself. You can speak out on things like Pizzagate. If it's a, if it's a, if it disgusts you, you can say so. You know, you don't have to accept the mainstream media explanation, wait for what CNN tell you is a justifiable reason for what's happened, or label it as fake news. You know, with that empowerment, you will ignore the news and go, let's have a little look for myself. What can I find out to my own satisfaction rather than right. just being told? Um, but that's that's a long old sentence, you know, right. that, that won't convince somebody on the spot that's going, well, you know, look at the moon. Right. <laughs> that, that's not right. flat, is it? <laughs> and when it comes to things like that, like with Pizzagate, like I don't, I, I've, I've video logged about my thoughts on that and I might do it again. Um, and I've had people tell me, you know, well, that's, you know, maybe that's happening and maybe it's not. And what are we going to do about it and how are we going to change it? Well, that's a terrible attitude, you know, and if with today's technology, look what we're doing right now, and I'm doing this on my phone. You could take your phone out, and if you feel a certain way about something, you want to share your opinion, you don't know who else out there is going to resonate with your thoughts, you know. And also, because little old me might get up there and say something, I might um, uh, motivate someone who is kind of scared to share their thoughts to also do it, you know. And I don't, I don't know. 100% all the truth about Pizzagate, but I do know that the terrible things that that involves really do happen. And if saying something, you know, and mentioning about it and a couple people see it on YouTube makes some kind of difference because more people look into it and then they share it and more people look into it, then you are making a difference. I mean, if people who have never heard about Flat Earth or never heard about the atrocities like something like Pizzagate, you know, hear it from a video log or something like that, then you're just, you're, you are changing the world a little bit. And I think it does make a difference. Absolutely. It's a dangerous subject because on the one hand, we all kind of, I'm going to say this, we know these things occur, but how the information is presented to us and the reasons behind what information we've been given is, is tentative. You know, some things are there as red herrings, some things are absolute fact, some things are the truth hidden in plain sight. It's a web, a massive web of deceit. So um, ever since it's in, I don't want to say inception, ever since it's um, sort of coming to the forefront, um, myself and Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, there you go, second mention, I'm sure you'll be chuffed, um, have been back and forth on Skype every day. And every day I, I'll look through the videos and the new information that comes out and, and put a different hat on to, to how I feel it is in terms of um, how it's being presented. My feelings will never change. This stuff does happen. You know, there's some really wonderful examples of people who've put their neck on the line to get this information out there. And I'll, I'll praise Jaron Campanella of uh, Jaronism in this regard when he talks about um, the Hampstead case. Um, yes. It's horrific. Um, but unlike Pizzagate, with the Hampstead case, it's for me at least far more compelling because it's uh, it's really in your face. It's not subtle. Um, it's right. not tied up in code or innuendo. Uh, it's it's right there. It's right in your face. Unless you want to convince yourself that these children are, are, are trained to to have stories that they can at, at a pinch, you know, come up with the same explanations over and over again. It, it's un, it's unthinkable that that could be the case. Right. Therefore, those the, the children's testimony to me is, is absolutely sound. You know, it can't be anything other than what they say. Yes, there's going to be minor details that 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 change to a small degree as as they are coerced. But Jaron did a mass massively wonderful job of presenting it all. You know, it's in its yeah. entirety. You know, the, the beginning testimony and then the skewed testimony at the end, and he kind of left people to make their own decisions on on. Um, on, on uh, how they felt about it or whether or not they believed it to be true, whether or not they believed the children. And that took right. a lot of courage, but it's flat earth that's taken Jaron to that place, you know, and it's a, an amazing place to be where you're, um, 
you know, I mean, maybe confident is the wrong word, but confident enough to say, no, God damn, I will expose this information and, you know, to hell with consequences. If it, if it is going to impact negatively on me, then so be it. It is worthy of people's attention, you know, and that's, you know, another uh, a byproduct of Flat Earth. I, got to know, I really didn't want it to be about all the negativity about it, but it seems to have gone that way, unfortunately. No. No, but I'll say one more thing just about that. The the reason why the Hampstead thing is more compelling, like you said, is because it's you're hearing from potential victims and it's just heart wrenching. But I will leave that at I'll leave that to the audience. I mean, if you want to research it, you know, research it. Um I just actually revisited that whole story just recently because of everything that has to do with Pizzagate. Um and it, it is so hard, like you said, there's just absolutely so much deceit out there. It, it's so hard to tell what's right or what's wrong or what's true and what's not. But um, when you were talking about, you know, that helped, those are the kinds of things that, you know, being able to share those sorts of things because of confidence, it's like, it's almost like you, you get to a point where you, it's, it's almost like sacrificial. I don't know how to explain it. Like you are you're giving up a part of yourself and you're saying, I actually am not, I am actually not as much concerned about the fact that this might hurt me in some way. Learning the information might hurt you in some way. Beautifully, beautifully yeah. put because first and foremost, with we're going to speak now from the standpoint that Hampstead is absolutely correct from Jaron's perspective. Now, yep. just taking that as the standpoint, just to make this explanation a little bit easier. If that's the case, our sympathies first and foremost must be with the children, the family, the people who have suffered the abuse. However, uh, on the next level down, you have people like Jaron, who's you know sacrificing his his innermost to put his information out there. And and while that is the the standard that we should be adhering to, we should be giving people like Jaron and the Hampstead kids sympathy and support. What actually happens is they get ridiculed, they get persecuted they are made scapegoats and it's it is yeah. a disgusting way to be i know in in flat earth because it's um for me like we said at the beginning of the show it's quite a simplistic thing we can show strength and support for each other so that when things like hampstead come along um th there is strength in numbers that hopefully will be people other people like we are doing now that say no we support you in your actions absolutely you know we want to sh stand shoulder to shoulder and expose this stuff um, as as hard and as difficult as it's been for Jaron, he's done it on his own. You know, uh, um, for, you know, it doesn't take much to, to sort of give that sort of person support. Um, so ultimately, you know, hopefully there will be either resolve for the family or um, it won't happen going into the future. I'm um, no doubt that whatsoever it's happening to this second right now. Yep, and I I I think that's where both you and I and everyone else out there that puts themselves out there, you know, on YouTube or on these hangouts or in their content videos, they do the same thing. They, we, like I said, it's like you're sacrificing a part of you, first of all, for, for diving into this, any kind of rabbit hole of truth and learning about it because it changes you. Um, and also for sharing it because you, you are going to come under a certain amount of harassment. I know you have, I know I have. Um, but I think it's worth it to put that information out there because there's so much more positive that you get from it because it helps other people. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good way to put it. It is definitely worth it. Uh, on the other hand, it is kind of unfortunate because for some people, there's there's no option. It is genuinely the red pill. You know, you can't actually deceive yourself into thinking it's a ball again. You know, you're going right. to live in mental torture. You know, once it's clear, <laughs> there's no going back. So for some... <laughs> You know, to heed our words, it is positive. Eventually, at the end of the road, even if you're thinking this is this is a nightmare, why did I ever mention to anybody that the earth is flat? You know, I've, I've received nothing but ridicule. You know, in, in the long run, that won't be the case. You know, you will be yeah. better for knowing the truth. The truth is always better. Absolutely. And I would say to people that are feeling that way, anyone, any one of you out there that right now that are feeling that way, that you regret knowing the truth and you wish you could go back because you feel like it's nothing but ridic ridic you're getting ridiculed and harassed, then there, 
you have choices and you can change that. You can realign yourself with different people. If there's people harassing you, you block them, you know, you change things. And, and then also, I know it sounds weird, but if you can stomach it, put yourself out there and start doing the more positive things like, um, getting into a group where it's like a support group or going out there and making observations or make a content video where you're actually being active in the community and you will then start to enjoy it. Go outside and look at the sun, <laughs> you know, go out and make moon observations or go do a, a moon temperature experiment or, you know, go out and, and look at how flat the ocean is, you know, those kinds of experiments or observations and start feeling the good side of flat earth. Don't focus on those people that are gonna ridicule you and harass you. Don't get stuck in that part of it. It shouldn't be a bad thing to know truth. You just gotta realign yourself, you know, and, and make, you can make different choices because I think we've all been there. Yeah, I'm glad you said it about five times because, you know, at the start it was like, get into the group, but go out, just go out. You know, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Yeah. Life is for living. You know, as wonderful yep. as this is right now, I'm really enjoying this conversation. You know, tomorrow I will be going for a walk and enjoying life. Oh, and yeah. like, looking at the stars, looking at the sun and moon. It's it's nice. Life is sweet. You know, yep. this reminds me actually that what you just said about a scene in The Matrix, the first one, where you've got, I think his name's Cypher, and he's plugged into The Matrix, and he's having a, a meeting with the bad guys, and he's, eat, he's at a restaurant, and he's eating a steak, and they're asking him about whether or not he'll be okay having his mind erased uh, and being plugged back in. And he's, he explains that while he's eating the steak, it's juicy and delicious, and it doesn't matter that it's not real because ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yep, I remember that that scene. But it's a lie. Oh, it's I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And it. I think that's what a lot of people want to stay that way, though, is they do want to just be ignorant, they don't, I think that's why people get angry when you bring up any kind of truth, something like flat earth, don't, do not say that to me because I don't want to question anything, I, they're too distracted, too much going on in their life, but I think to those of us that have pursued it, it's, it's just more important than watching The Walking Dead or, <laughs> you know, watching a football game or, you know, the I guess the humdrum things that normal people care about. It's yeah, just it's like two, two different worlds. Yeah, easier to convince somebody that they've been, it's easier to lie to somebody than to convince somebody that they have been lied to. Nobody wants to feel like they're, they're a fool. And ultimately, right. at the start at least, I, I felt, you know, very foolish. You know, how have I not seen this before? How could I have been so stupid? You feel like you're, you're an idiot for having believed that you lived on a spinning ball flying through space you know, as opposed to being at the center of it all on a flat plane with, you know, the stars above you and the ground beneath you. That's where we right. live in reality. We we know it in, intrinsically because we experience it every day. And that yeah. is a, a fundamental part of how we be, how we live. So to deny that with the spinning ball rubbish, you feel really foolish when you actually accept that. Um, but you have to, you know, you've got no option once you realize the truth. Yeah, it's almost like something clicks over in your brain. And I wish I could project how I feel about it now into anyone that I talk to because it if they knew how I felt about it, like you're saying, it's it's laughable <laughs> to think back at what we used to think was real when in reality everything that we looked at when we go outside and and the earth is motionless or when we look at the sun and the moon and it's close and we look at the sun and the moon and they look similar size, you know, and that there's just no way that we're a spinning pear ball in space, you know, it's, we've always seen this from the time that we were little, but for some reason we have, we were completely convinced otherwise. We've, we're just, we've, I don't know, we're just programmed to completely just agree with what other people tell us and not figure it out on our own. We just can't we've even. The, we've had all the tools dropped. You said programmed. You know, yeah. all the, the, the programming, it's the, it's they hide the devil in the detail of the title. You know, it's, yeah. it is programming, and that's what we call our TV. You know, we're watching our programming. Yep. yep, absolutely. And that's why I limit what I watch. Like I said, if I watch anything, 
it's very late at night and it's like old funny sitcoms and that's just kind of playing in the background but i i don't i, I can't i can't watch much else it's absolutely it's just like disheartening it's, i can't even look at it <clears throat> that's it you realize eventually that the tv's poison and uh, you're better yep. off without it better off outside looking at the moon yeah and if it was just me i mean i'm i live with my fiance if it was just me we would get rid of it completely and i would have just a laptop up there and we would watch flat earth documentaries and interviews all the time <laughs> we wouldn't watch we wouldn't have a tv did you want to did you want to plug any i know you're they're close sites so is it is it worth plugging anything that you've got in terms of facebook um well i mean i can share my uh the I can still share the group. It's like I said, it's called flat and happy. It's a closed group, but that doesn't mean you can't ask to become a member. Um, the only thing is, is that I, I look at people closely that want to try to get in. And if it doesn't look like you're at all a flat earther, I don't let people in. So if they have absolutely no evidence that they are in other flat earth groups, no um, friends that are like, if they don't have any like friends, like I have, you know what I mean? Um, and absolutely no evidence of being into flat earth at all. It's very hard for me to just let them in. And the only reason I do that is because you will have people out there with fake profiles or people out there that are just want to get into groups just to, to harass and to debate flat earth. And that's not what that group is for. Yeah, so, I don't really think you need to justify it because we, we yeah. all know well and good yep. that there's, there's stones being thrown. So that is, I think, at the side. It's, it's a safe haven and there has to be... Yeah things in place to stop the ridicule in certain right. areas that's one of them so, right. yeah. and, I, and I watch it very carefully and I have other I have co-admins that um, watch it with me uh, my YouTube channel is just Carly Sunshine it's just uh, a bunch of short content videos and also video logs just my opinions my thoughts so if, if you get on there and you listen and you like how I you know how I share my thoughts and you can subscribe <laughs> <clears throat> Cool. Well, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on Carly Sunshine. It's been a real pleasure. Well, thank you so much. The hour went really fast. <laughs> it always does when it's a, when it's a nice conversation. So yes. Yeah, I really awesome. enjoyed it. Me too. I'll say a little bit of a thank you to the chat as well. So to all of you who have joined us live, thank you very much for being here. Thanks again to Carly Sunshine. It's been a real pleasure. I've been Nathan Oakley. I'll see you all in the next video.